I mean, these black markets, you know, so much of it, the lesson for me has always been when reporting on these black markets, it's all about inequality, right? You, mm -hmm. your, your choices are only as good as the opportunities you're yeah. given, right? Sure. If you don't have those opportunities, you're going to become, you know, first like a watcher for the cartel, mm -hmm. or, and then eventually climb the ladder and become a Sicario. That's, 100 percent. It's the yeah. only job you have available for you. Yeah. What else are you going to do? And, and again, if you're living in the Congo and you're in the area where they're mining exactly. cobalt, what are you going to do? Yeah. You're going to start if, your own business? Yeah. What are you going to do? Right. Do and do? if your family is, can't, doesn't have anything on the table to eat and they yeah. offer you $10, which will feed your family for a week to go and kill a chimp, you're going to go and kill a chimp. Exactly. Right. Yeah. That's the biggest problem. Yeah. So what else did you uh, investigate? How many episodes did you do this year? Ten. Um, eight are now on Hulu. Two more are coming soon. Um, but uh, one of them, another one, Cartel. Um, involvement is about fake pharmaceutical pills. That's mm. really interesting. We spent time with a group called La Union in Mexico City, where 80% of their job, of their money right now, comes from fake pharmaceutical pills. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they're making these pills. And then we went to India as well, which is another source of pharmaceutical pills. You have, like, 40,000 online pharmacies that you can go to and buy prescription drugs without a prescription. So a lot of Americans are doing that because it's much cheaper. I think it's something like 20 million Americans are using the black market for their pills, for their drugs, because they can't afford them here, which is 20 crazy. 20 million. 20 million. It's crazy. And people that can't afford, that need these medications to survive, and they can't afford them here um, because we have the highest drug prices in the entire world. And so when you say fake, is it um, – it's not manufactured by, you know, Pfizer or whatever, but is it the same components? It looks exactly the same, but a lot of these pills don't actually have any active ingredients. So we spent time with a guy making 20,000 pills a night out of this little, you know, back house with a, a machine, a pill, a pill presser. And he w it was just calcium and food dye to make it look the color, whatever color he wanted. And he was selling it as amoxicillin and, you know, very likely ending up in American homes because they ship it all around the world. Wow. Yeah. And, and in that case, um, you know, the good luck of the buyer is that it was just calcium, but in many cases it gets mixed with cement and rat poison and all sorts of things. They don't and give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. And even worse is the cartel in Mexico, we found out. Um, there's a great L.A. Times investigation on this, and then we sort of started doing our own investigation. But they're mixing these drugs uh, with fentanyl and meth. So I think it was something like 70% of the drugs that they bought and tested had actually had meth and fentanyl, and Americans were crossing the border into Mexico to buy these drugs and then dying. Jesus. It's insane. But it's all, again, it's like easy for us to blame the cartel and other people for doing this, but it's all our, our fault. It's, it's the broken greed. system that we have in our country. Why, why are we paying, you know, why are we, this woman that we filmed with, she was paying $700 for this medication that she needs, and she couldn't afford it. Her health insurance wasn't covering it. So she would go across the border and pay $60 for it in Mexico, of course. And is any of it the real medication? Yeah, some of it is. Um, How is, is there a way to tell? And they're real pharmacies. Uh, but what we So some of the real pharmacies have fake drugs? N so that's what's so interesting is that even pharmacies that are real, that are completely authentic and legitimate, and that you, there's towns, there's a town that we filmed that called Algodones, for example, that's on the other side of the Arizona border, that is that has more hospitals and orthodontists and up Tish, up to Tishrans, oh, how do you say the doctor glasses? Optometrists. Optometrists than anywhere else in the world. Um, it's basically you, you drive around and it's like doctor's office, pharmacy, uh, optometrist, all of it. Uh, and it's all catering to Americans, right? And so vast numbers of Americans come every year and buy their drugs there. And there are pharmacies that are chain pharmacies that look, there could be a CVS, but in Mexico. It's not a CVS, but it could be sort of brand name that you recognize in Mexico. But what we did with the cartel is we were trying to figure out how they get their medications in the, these shelves. And we filmed one cartel member. He allowed us to film. We couldn't go inside, but I had him. He had a mic, so I was able to listen to everything from the car. He, went, he goes into a pharmacy and basically tells the woman there, like this. And the meds look, we saw them making them. They look exactly like the real thing, the packaging, everything. Some of it actually comes from the legitimate places that they steal from the factories, like the packaging and all of it. Um, but they basically tell them, okay, you put this on your shelves, and if you don't, we're going to burn your ph pharmacy. 
So we saw, we heard that. We saw that. <sighs> and so a lot of them are forced to carry them. And they're forced to the carry cartel. fake drugs. Yeah. And do they have any idea what's in them when they're selling them? Or they just... I don't think they do. No. I, I doubt that they knew, for example, that there was fentanyl and meth mixed in with some of their other medications because that creates a huge problem for them. And so for the consumer, how do they find the legitimate stuff? They don't, which is why it's so hard. So this woman that we followed, she goes there, she buys her medication, and I asked her, do you know what's in there? Oh, no, but it's my friend told me that it's a legitimate pharmacy. Of course, she has no idea right. that this is happening, that the cartel is actually threatening them to death if they don't stock their shelves with their pharma fake pharmaceuticals. Did pharmaceutical. you take any of that stuff and test it? Uh, we did. It's a lot more complicated um, than than it seems. The L.A. Times, again, did an amazing investigation where they did test it. And again, I think it was something like seven or eight out of their 10 that they tested had fentanyl and meth, which was crazy, out of two pharmacies, I think. And what kind of drugs are they talking about that have fentanyl and meth? Uh, in it? Oh, I can't remember, but it was, I think it was Adderall, maybe. Mm. Um, I can't remember exactly. But it was a great investigation. And, yeah, in our in our story, we sort of looked at how it ends up in the shelves and who's making it and how it's being produced. There's a, an amazing doctor in Mexico City called Dr. Loco, who we spend time with, a doctor, a crazy doctor, Dr. Loco, who was a chemist himself, a f doctor as well. And his father owned a pharmacy, so he sort of knew how to – and he showed us. He's, make, he's putting the little silicone pouch inside – and the cotton ball that goes inside, and it looks exactly the same. Like, no one would have been able to tell. God, that's so scary. So scary. Yeah. Yeah. Does, is there any evidence that that happens in America? That it's being sold in America? Yeah, we went with a raid with the sheriff, L.A. Sheriff's Department where we saw a sort of a grocery store uh, in the back that were selling these medications, m m mainly to underprivileged immigrant communities because they but couldn't But they're not the in stuff. legitimate pharmacies. Not, not, not that not we've yet. known. Not yet. Not yet. No. But that we know of. No, not yet that we know of. But again, it's uh, at the end we went and visited a spokesperson for a group called Pharma that is a lobby group that represents the pharmaceutical companies. And um, yeah, I, she was very happy to talk about how counterfeit medications are very damaging for America, right? Because yeah, so are the real ones. Yeah. And that's, um, that's why I asked her, but why is it that 20 million Americans have to resort to a black market because they can't afford their medications here? Yeah. And that whole conversation, as you know, is fascinating. Yeah, what and did she say about that? Well, she says that they need the money for innovation, uh, R&D, right, research and development, and that's how they can get new drugs that are important for Americans. I said, that's all great, but... If